Well, in this video, we're going to talk about a socialist group that you really need to hear about. Yep, they're behind a lot more things than you think. And so stick with me, folks, and I'll be right back to talk about it. Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and oh my goodness, I came across this organization that you really need to hear about. Let me give you a few preliminary things here, and then we'll get into it. First of all, I wanted to share this with you because this is really odd, what happened in this particular interview here. Well, it's not really an interview, but they were having a discussion, and they had Newt Gingrich on the phone uh, remotely. So... Just kind of watch this, because as soon as Newt mentions George Soros, all of a sudden, boom, uh, they, like, cut him off. It's really strange. Destroyed by this violence. Yeah, no. it's so true. <clears throat> they represent everybody, Paris. right? Speaker Gingrich, I know yeah. you have a final thought for us. Yeah, look, the number one problem in almost all these cities is George Soros elected left-wing anti-police, pro-criminal district attorneys who refuse to pe keep people locked up. Uh, just yesterday, they put somebody back on the street who's wanted for two different murders in New York City. Uh, you cannot solve this problem. And both Harris and Biden have talked very proudly about what they call progressive di district attorneys. Progressive district attorneys are anti-police, pro-criminal, and overwhelmingly elected with George Soros's money, and they're a major cause of the violence we're seeing because they keep putting the violent criminals back on the street. I'm not sure we need to bring and George get Soros into this. <laughs> I was going to say you get the last word, he Speaker. <laughs> he, he, he paid for it. I mean, why can't we discuss the fact that millions no, of he dollars he spent? I, I agree with Melissa. George people. Soros doesn't need to be a part of this conversation. Okay. So it's verboten. All right, we're going to. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, a historic day at the White House. Is that odd or what? I mean, they just sat there. Uh, uh, it's like, I think that blonde girl is a Democrat, and that's probably why she jumped on that. But I just thought it was really weird that that's how it ended. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. I'll try to find the link to the actual full clip for you. But um, in the meantime, I'll make sure that I put this on there. Because I'll tell you, this is a really good thread, by the way. Because he goes through and he shows several of these DA races that George Soros put a bunch of money into. So it this is an excellent thread to read. Anyway, I just felt I needed to share that with you because I was watching it and it's like, what? As soon as he mentioned George Soros, all of a sudden, oh, don't, don't mention George Soros. <laughs> anyway, hey, this is my channel shout out today. And I wanted to share this with you because this part that he's going to say right here, I think is just really right on the mark. Now, he's somebody who has commented several times on my videos and everything, so he watches them. And I just wanted to give him a little shout out. He doesn't have a lot of subscribers. I'll put the main uh, page for his channel, but I want to play just a little bit of this one. Anyway, so disabled vet's perspective, that's what you need to have. And I'm not sure why, but when I typed it and I typed in vets and for some reason, YouTube had it listed under disabled veterans perspective. So I don't know if he's changed it slightly or whatever, but that's the situation. Oh, I don't have this clicked. Well, I thought I did. Okay, you click all there in order to make sure you get the notifications when they post something new because otherwise YouTube's just not going to do it. But anyway, listen to what he has to say here. So, take the time, study the people that are coming in. Let's get rid of them and bring this place back to a constitution where it should be. Remember, it's God-given rights and these people swear an oath to protect us and to protect our God-given rights. And the Constitution is there to restrict the government, not the people. The, you do not have constitutional rights. You have God-given rights that are protected 
under the Constitution. And someday we'll get back to that if we all do our job. Yeah, he nailed it right there. You know, they talk about constitutional rights, but they're really not. They're God-given rights that the Constitution protects those rights for us. So we're right on there. Way to go. And I wanted to give a shout out to him. So make sure that you go and you, you know, encourage him. And if you find his stuff good, then make sure you subscribe and let him know that you appreciate what he's doing. So there you go. And I want to thank him for his service, too. And I want to really express my appreciation for what he's done for our country. And what he's doing now is still very important. So anyway, that's my Patriot shout out for this time. Check him out. OK, so let me go on. By the way, he mentioned something in this about uh, do um, weapons, the direct energy weapons. Guess what? Mr. 17 gave us this link today. And this is what this little thing is about. It's about they call them directed energy weapons or de weapons <laughs> it's like yeah do okay so that's uh something very interesting there and it appears that that is bigger than maybe we knew about because uh that was one of the reasons why we needed a space force and we needed it asap so great to know that our president is looking out for us and that he is addressing the situation and our military appears to be uh, taking care of that. So thank you very much, military. And the question our friend here had was, it seems like that uh, potential is still in the hands of the black hats. Well, I don't know. It does seem like the white hats are making progress on it. There might be some things that still need to be addressed. And it's possible they can't be addressed until after some arrests happen and all the stuff that's going to happen after the election. So that's a possibility there. I'm not sure what the solution is. I can't really answer you, but I just thought it was kind of ironic that after you had posted that, that, you know, <laughs> Mr. 17 had to chime in too. So maybe you've got like a back channel to him. You know, if you do, Find out what's going on, okay? <laughs> anyway, I wanted to point this out to you because this, I believe, was also, yeah, Mr. 17 recommended this. But this is really important with what we're going to talk about in just a minute. Because the Wall Street Journal said A.G. Barr tells prosecutors to consider charging violent protesters with sedition. Now, the reason that's important is because there is an organization that if you go to the vault, uh, the FBI vault has a lot of um, FOIA requests and things that have been declassified in it. And if you put in the name of this organization, which is Freedom Road Socialist Organization, you know, the name of this video, right? Uh, you'll find out that there's 559 items matching it. Lots of stuff here from various time periods. So they've been around for quite a while. And they have several times Black Panther Party is mentioned in here. There's several uh, political figures. And um, so I think this is something the Black Panther Party, like I said, several, several times. And, you know, there's 19 pages. This is just the first page. So um, also Jonestown. Hmm. So lots of stuff there that we could be going through. You know, Malcolm X, all kinds of good stuff. But they all mention this because I think you're going to see it unfold as I go through this. Here we go. Well, there's an organization, like I said, and this is FRSO is what they call themselves, but this stands for Freedom Road Socialist Organization. And they say on, this is their site, they say on their site that it is a national organization of revolutionaries fighting for socialism in the United States. Our home is in the working class. Now, I read through one of their articles. Oh, my goodness. It was, like, painful. <laughs> but, and, of course, they're after Trump. But one of the things I noticed about it is that they have everybody separated into classes. And each class, they even have, by the way, they even have a YouTube channel so you can listen to them in person. But what they have 
is they have everybody separated into different classes and, you know, the working class, the low, middle and upper working classes. And they have them all just delineated. You know, it's like, stay in your box. You must be in that box because you have such and such a job. And, you know, of course, you know, it's it's totally communism. I mean, they say socialism, but folks, it, let's not mince words. It really comes down to communism because that's what it always devolves into. So when you're talking about this and, and you're, you're reading through their material, it's just so focused on capitalism is bad obviously bad. And anyone who is a capitalist is bad. There you go. That's it. And the only people that count are the workers. So, you know, you can go through here. Oh, they have it in Spanish too. If you'd rather read it in Spanish, you can do that. But, you know, unity statement, that's the last thing they're really trying to do. But, you know, you can just tell from looking at these. Class in the U.S. and and strategy for revolution. That's what I read. Mind numbing garbage. Um, really, it seriously is. They they just have everyone decided what they're like purely from where you know what class they are in the United States, and of course they're the ones to impose the classes on everyone else, and it, they equate capitalism with imperialism. They see those as synonyms. And so everyone who is a capitalist is bad, period. And when you read through it, the one thing that struck me, you know, my father was a businessman. He had a factory. And, you know, he worked just as hard, if not harder, than most of the people in that factory. He was working in the plant itself with them all the time. And if there was a dirty job to do, he was the first one in there. He didn't sit in some ivory palace and tell his workers what to do. But according to these people, he wouldn't have been in the working class. He'd have been a capitalist. So, ooh, he would have been evil. And, you know, like I said, this is just crazy. When you go through and you see all these different things, it's all Marxism. And you can see, I mean, they don't hide it at all imperialist globalization in the U.S. And, you know, that's what they're doing right there. You go to About Us and it really doesn't give you much. They have this Congress every so often. And they had one recently. I can't remember. um, I want to say 2014 maybe was the most recent, but possibly not. Possibly one since then. Anyway, so they are organized, definitely, and that's what they believe that they're doing. They have 238 subscribers. Ooh, big channel. But you know what the deal is? They can make a lot of problems with just a very few people, and that's what's happening. Uh, here's the, the uh, Wikipedia on them, which is probably fairly accurate, but very biased, you know, promoting them as, ooh, good people. And when you start reading through, uh, you find out that they are just a communist group and uh, really have ties to China. And uh, very much they're working for organizing workers to rise up. Now, I do understand that workers are very important, like in factories, workers are important. But the product that comes out is not just something the workers did. They're not the ones totally responsible for it. They are partly responsible because they can be interchanged. You know, you can get different workers and you're still doing the same product. But you had to have somebody who came up with the idea. So when we have capitalism, all these horrible companies that these people are complaining about, it's like a dance. You know, it has to have both partners to it. And you're both providing part of the entertainment. If you're watching a dance couple, you don't just watch one, you watch them both. And they need to work together. And it's when they're working together that you have this performance come out. And that's what you really have happening with a factory. You know, the workers are essential, but without the people who started the business and put all their capital into it, you're not going to have a factory for the workers to work in. 
So it takes both. And it's like here with YouTube. I mean, if YouTube would just come to the realization that we're supposed to work together because our content is what makes them money and they sell ads. So we need this partnership between the three of us. We have the content creator. We have YouTube, the facilitator here. They provide the platform for us. And then you have the advertiser who provides the money and it's just, we all help each other. You know, the ads on my channel will help the advertiser. The advertiser helps me. YouTube provides the place I can have this. I help out YouTube. The advertiser helps out YouTube. It all comes together. We're all helping each other. And when it does come together, it's good. The problem is it's not coming together so well right now. So let's go on about this because this organization, they had... Um, you know, they've been around since the 80s and really before that, I think some of it, you know, the foundational um, start of it really started before that in the 70s. But they really became an organization in the 80s and all the way up. There's been some different things. There was a split at one time. And then in 2010, there were some raids. Now, the raids... If you look at this, it was September 24, 2010, over 70 FBI agents simultaneously raided homes and served subpoenas to prominent anti-war and international solidarity activists in Minneapolis, Chicago, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. So this is Midwest-centered, by the way. You know, you'll see that if you look through all their material. The agency's computers, books, written material, cell phones, family portraits, clothing, and other items deemed political. FBI agents also visited and attempted to question activists in Milwaukee, Durham, North Carolina, and San Jose, California. The search warrants and subpoenas indicated that the FBI was looking for evidence related to the material support of terrorism. And it says, in the process of raiding an activist's home, FBI agents accidentally left behind a file of secret FBI documents showing that the raids were aimed at people who were or were suspected of being members of the FRSO. Hmm, that's kind of just an odd phrase to put in there, that odd sentence, because the whole point of the FBI raid would have been because they were part of this organization and the FBI likely suspected this organization of being terrorists or at least supporting terrorism. So that's why they did the raid. And so anyway, if you look at this, they also are connected to the Palestinians and, you know, a solidarity organization here in Colombia, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. Part of that, too. I mean, they've got all these connections. And so they created this committee to stop FBI repression. And so it's still going on. And uh, they want everybody, they're telling all these people to resist the FBI and not answer any of their questions. We can resist by refusing to participate. This political spying is about sowing fear and trying to repress a political movement. Refuse to answer any questions. It doesn't matter what agency, every word you say will be used against you. Isn't that what the Miranda rights say? <laughs> anyway, uh, your friends, associates in the movement and read and share these Know Your Rights materials from the Center for Constitutional Rights and National Lawyers Guild. Kind of interesting that they did that, and they have links to that. But anyway, this was the whole thing. You can see cases. The donate does not take you to Act Blue, which I was a little surprised with, but um, it just seems to be one that they do here. And uh, some of them do it on their own site. It's just Act Blue seems to be the big one because that's how they <laughs> launder their money. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, I was reading the Epic Times today, and I came across this article on Maoist Burn Kenosha, and I started reading it. Now, I didn't have my current edition. It, it's, <laughs> needless to say, I've been giving away the Epic Times more than I've been reading it lately, because I keep finding people that go, wow, that's really good paper. And it's a, well, here, why don't you take it? Um, I highly recommend, if you don't have this paper, get it. 
it does have stuff in it you're not going to read in other places. You really aren't. They do a lot about China, which is a connection with all of this. Like I said, Maoists burn Kenosha. And so this article itself, really good. Now you have to understand that if you're, uh, if you have a subscription to it, you're going to be able to read the articles. If you don't have a subscription, some of the things I'm going to show you, you're not going to be able to access. And I apologize for that. But most of these videos that you're watching from Patriots these days have ads from the Epic Times. And right now, I think you can get like a month's subscription for a dollar. You get a regular newspaper once a week, and it's a pretty packed newspaper. It's got lots of stuff in it. It even has comics. <laughs> but it has really good articles, and uh, it's it's a good newspaper. Plus, you get access to all of the stuff on their website. So I highly recommend it. You know, try it out for a, a month for a buck. And I think it's sixteen ninety, pretty close to $17 a month but you do get a lot. I mean, there's a lot of articles and they do cover things that you're never going to read otherwise. Well, anyway, so this particular thing, this Freedom Road Socialist Organization, I searched for it and look at all the different things they have about it. Now, I don't know why I haven't noticed these before, but look for this word, people's war, that phrase right there. That was a really interesting article. And, uh, you know, this, this has China written all over it, folks. It really does. So anyway, this article here was the one that I was reading and, uh, it really is very eye opening because the rioters who attacked police officers with Molotov cocktails and fireworks and torched numerous buildings in Kenosha, Wisconsin for about a week included members of the same pro-China communist group that sparked the May riots in Minneapolis after the police involved killing of George Floyd. Now, they sparked it. Check this out right here. Now, it's under archive. I understand that, but this is from a Facebook page. This guy, Frank Chapman, who is one of their leaders, is in Minneapolis, St. Paul today to meet with the movement that launched the nationwide rebellion in the wake of the police murder of George Floyd. So right there, I mean, it really says it. So anyway, back to this article. Um, and it's the Freedom Road Socialist Organization. Maoist activists from the Freedom Road Socialist Organization can take most, if not all, of the credit for inciting the recent rioting in Kenosha. The town of 100,000 people has been torn apart, businesses and cars have been razed, multiple people have been arrested, and two people have died, yet no one seems to want to call out the real culprits. This FRSO is based in the Midwest. It has maintained a strong presence in Chicago and Minneapolis for decades. The subversive organization has expanded in recent years into Milwaukee and the smaller university towns of Oshkosh and Kenosha, where new cadre are recruited through campus branches of FRSO's youth wing, New Students for a Democratic Society. Well... You know, you can read the rest of this if you if you have a subscription and everything. But that's the main part of it you need to hear is that it's really a Maoist group. People's War, this was the one I was telling you about. People's War, pro-China communists claim credit for sparking U.S. riots. So this has been going on. It says here, Leaders of the pro-Chinese Communist Party Freedom Road Socialist Organization have claimed credit for the spark that has inflamed the world, referencing the recent wave of rioting that has devastated several U.S. cities. There's also evidence that the Beijing loyal FRSO wasn't just a catalyst for some of the most destructive civil unrest in U.S. history, but also laid the groundwork for and is playing an active role in maintaining momentum for the ongoing insurrection. And then they go through this whole article. It's very interesting. Down here at the bottom, I wanted to show you what it says here. 
Uh, the FRSO could be causing mayhem on the direct orders of the CCP, or it could be acting autonomously in sympathy with the international revolutionary movement. Either way, it's clear that the FRSO thinks of itself as the instigator of the recent revolutionary wave and that their goal has only a little to do with racial justice and a lot to do with destroying Trump and the global wave of patriotism and state sovereignty. As America's institutions have become heavily infiltrated, it's not surprising that communist subversives are able to act freely. But Americans surely deserve a government with a political will to enforce existing laws that would thwart bad actors from destabilizing the United States and the world. Really good article. Both of these articles are really excellent worth reading. I'll leave the links to them down below. But he pretty much says, hey, here's our situation, folks. We have Chinese communists, basically, people who are sympathizers for the Chinese communists, and they're the ones that are participating in this. They're the ones taking credit for it, okay? They're saying we did this, and they're wanting all the applause for it. So, are they subversives? Yeah. Sedition? Yeah. I think there's more to it. But hey, look at what I found out. They have this newsletter that is called Fight Back. Now, you gotta wonder if Q meant this. When he had that hashtag Fight Back, is this what he was talking about? You know, I was thinking I found the Lynn Wood thing, and if you haven't seen that video, that was a good video. But... Um, then I came across this and I thought, well, what if Q meant this? Hashtag fight back. Because this is their newsletter. And when you go through, you know, they have all these different things. People's struggles, capitalism and economy, United States, and oh, oppressed nationalities, poor people's movements. Essentially, these are the people that are pawns. And this is what's really sad about this because... When they do this interview, I mean, they're talking to this guy right here. But when you see this, it's pretty much saying, yeah, the black people are going to be your pawns and you're just going to use us to get what you want. It's just, you sit there and you look at it and you go, what? And so they uh, resurrected this organization here, uh, National Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression, and that is what they're using to do this. With the founding of NAARPR in May 1973, there was an attempt to launch a national movement for community control of the police. Community control of the police. Because they believe that the police really shouldn't be telling them what to do. You know, it comes down to that. They don't want anyone telling them how they can live, what they can do. They want to do whatever they want. If they want to go in a store and take something, they can. That's what they want to have happen. And it's it's really sad. So anyway, that was a kind of interesting, weirdly interesting um, thing. But here's some of their other articles if you want to see them. Trump must be defeated. Well, that's a winner. Uh, movement for community control of the police. Again, I'm telling you this control of the police thing. This is this organization. Coalition to March on the DNC responds to Biden's decision to stay home. They were actually going to march on the DNC and then Biden didn't go. So that kind of threw a wrench in their plans and everything. And they were the ones really pushing for that $600 for the unemployed. And I have to ask myself, so they wanted the $600 for the unemployed so their unemployed people could go and do these riots and protests? Is that really? You know, let's face it. People with jobs don't have time to go protest, right? So who was funding these people? Were we, us, the American taxpayers, were we funding them? As they were out there protesting, burning, looting, all of this stuff, have we been funding this through this $600 for the unemployment? I think we have. 
sad, isn't it? Well, anyway, let's keep going because this is one here. This is from the Gateway Pundit, and it came out on June 14th, and I didn't really see it then, but at that time I was dealing with something else, and they talk about Act Blue, which I've already done a video on in case you haven't seen that. Essentially, Act Blue is this central hub where donations to many, many Democrat uh, organizations go. And part of the fine print is that it says that if that particular organization does not um, accept the donation, then your contribution will go to where Act Blue thinks it's most needed, which for the most part right now has been to Joe Biden's campaign. So this was with Black Lives Matter, many nice people who truly believe that black lives do matter, wanted to support the idea that we do need to make sure that people are safe and that no matter what your skin color is, that you should be treated fairly. I agree with that. So when all these nice people donated their money to Black Lives Matter, what happened? Well, it was channeled into a major fund and then went where? Nobody knows except Act Blue, and likely it went to uh, Joe Biden's campaign. But anyway, if you go down here, this was really interesting. They do a lot of the same things that um, I talked about. And then there's this Ashley Yates. I'm going to use this version because it's a little bigger. Uh, she says, again, please stop giving money to Black Lives Matter Network. By their own admission, they have no staff and no infrastructure. In six years, they've not produced a single community program, sponsored a single piece of legislation, or financially supported a single chapter. And then she puts this down here, just going to drop this email here. While focusing on local organizing sounds cute, there's a lot unanswered about the national staff and where all the money went. Also, notice how the first main objective listed is aggressive fundraising. So they can blow more money on vacays? Yeah. Um, you can go through and, and see this. When you click up here, if you click on this, it'll open it up in Twitter. And so you'll be able to see it better. and You'll be able to see some of the comments to it. And then she posted this, Why Black Lives Matter Cincinnati is Changing Its Name. And this is something that I've talked about before, and I am going to do a video on. I just haven't gotten it done yet because this tells you the truth. And I've been saying this for a long time now. They're going to change their name because it's not really Black Lives Matter anymore. It's here. For well over three years, we have recognized the stark difference in principles, politics, and methods of functioning between our independent organization, Black Lives Matter, Cincinnati, and the national leadership of Black Lives Matter, the movement for Black Lives Network, and other spinoffs and creations of the sliver of the Black Liberation Movement. Hmm. BLMC has never been a chapter of that organization or a partisan of its politics because even at the onset of us establishing our name as BLMC, we recognized that our idea of the type of movement necessary to win black liberation was at odds with the national body and its directives. So, you know, this was an organization that thought they were doing something good and then they started finding out. This black liberation movement is at the heart of this. There is something called black liberation theology. And this is something that if you remember, Barack Obama supposedly went to a church where Jeremiah Wright spoke. Uh, he was the pastor there. And he preached often about black liberation theology. A lot of people don't understand what this is, but it's basically, just in a nutshell, it is where blacks rule the world and everyone is subject to them. So it's not about equality, folks. That's not what black liberation theology is or this black liberation movement is about. It's about black superiority. Okay? 
So don't be, you know, deceived by that. Anyway, so I was a little surprised when I saw that in here, but that wasn't my main reason for coming here because, you know, my main reason was because of this uh, whole, wait a minute, human event. Okay, sorry. I thought that was said a certain organization that I had been looking into and it wasn't. Um, anyway, if you go down here, you can see here are some of them. This Black Lives Matter is just the shell. It is what they put on the outside. So everybody makes it, you know, thinks it looks good and they want to donate to it. But what's inside? Yeah, where the money really goes, that's the trick. And there are a lot of organizations, part of it, Dream Defenders. Uh, this was Acorn affiliated that the co-founder was that Working Families Party, Occupy Wall Street, Communist Party USA, these are all connected together. And this Angela Davis is one of them at the heart of it. And we're going to talk about her on a separate time because I need to look into her. But she's a big part of it. And then here we have Freedom Road Socialist Organization, Democratic Socialists of America, Committees of Correspondence for Democracy and Socialism, and Service Employees International Union, ACLU, Southern Poverty Law Center. Yeah, they're all connected in, folks. And they all have a connection back to China. The Freedom Road Socialist Organization is a hereditary descendant of the new communist movement inspired by Chinese dictator Mao Zedong and the many communist revolutions occurring throughout the world in the 60s and 70s. Freedom Road split into two separate groups in 1999 and Fight Back was one of them. Yeah. So again, I'm asking you, when Mr. 17 was talking about it, did Q mean this? Hmm. You just got to remember. And also, I thought this was interesting, but do not be confused. White with an uppercase W does not mean white as most Americans use the word. White in racial parlance means anyone of any race, creed, nationality, color, sex, or sexual preference who embraces capitalism, free markets, limited government, and American traditional culture and values. That's how they, you know, claim that people who are actually black and are conservatives aren't really black because they use this concept on them. So, uh, yeah, and anyone who aligns with them is white in spirit and thus equally guilty of white crimes. So um, just this article right here is really, really good. Liberals have manipulated the not-for-profit platform for years. Under Obama, conservatives were targeted when they asked for the NFP status after the origination of the Tea Party movement. What was missed at the time was that the Democrats had stepped into the not-for-profit game and corrupted it immensely. And so, anyway, you know that Americans are donating to NFPs believing they are who they say they are. However... The Democrat establishment has a more nefarious use of the NFB platform to accomplish their partisan goals. This is unknown to most donors. So be careful who you donate to. So I thought this was kind of an interesting Breitbart article here. Counter-terror expert, feds unaware of Antifa, Black Lives Matter, communist connections, objectives. Well, I'm not so sure. But anyway, it says a counterterrorism expert believes the riots that have taken place across the country are a coordinated effort by Marxist and communist groups. Okay, we've talked about that, right? They, there are citizens who support Black Lives Matter who are in it because they want liberty, want to make sure things are done right. And that's what I said. There honestly are people who have given to Black Lives Matter and who stand out there protesting who just want everything to be fair and just, which is fine. You know, it, that is, that's an okay thing, but they're being deceived when they think that Black Lives Matter cares about that. They don't care one iota about that. It's all about causing a revolution. But the leadership of Black Lives Matter, the entire reason the organization was formed, it was formed as a Marxist communist organization. The activities that it participates in, you've got to look at it through that lens. 
and the protests appear spontaneous, but they are immediately violent. People are armed. We know they're pre-staging pallets of bricks, and that's been a long time ago since we found that out, and they're seeking to overthrow the U.S. government. You know, that's what they're doing. Now, do the feds know that? I do think they know. I think that really is the direction they're going. And I think they're trying to trace everything back to where it's all coming from, which is not easy because the people who do this kind of stuff, who fund it, have layers and layers and layers between them and the violence so they can protect themselves. So I think it's going to take a little while, but I do think they're going to find it. This was a really good article you need to read. Um, very eye-opening. Again, it'd be good for a lot of people who think that these riots are just uh, spontaneous. Well, we know they aren't because the people going to these riots who are planning on causing trouble, look how they're dressed. Look how they're prepared. There are weapons available. They, something's fishy. And who's making it up? Well, you know, uh, China really does want to take us down. And who would benefit the most in the entire world? Who would benefit the most from the United States having an overthrow of our government to a Marxist regime or a Maoist regime? <laughs> you know, it's like, really, when you look at it like that, it's China. It's got China written all over it. And so I really do think this is something that's, uh, you know, I think it's something that's very important that people need to be aware of. Well, if you recall, a little while ago, I covered um, an organization called Socialist Alternative. And the website has been updated. It actually looks a lot better than it did. And the reason that I said that was because of this Shama Swant. She's a councilwoman in Seattle, if I remember correctly. And she put a lot into this. Well, the thing is... She's been doing a lot of stuff that she shouldn't be doing, and she's been participating in some of the things that they're doing. Well, in the past, she had an ethics complaint because she allowed socialists to fire a staffer. I think we talked about this. This was back in January of 2019, and so there were ethics complaints about her. Well, now, guess what? There's a group that's trying to get a petition around to recall her. And she is, uh, of course, denying all the charges. Here's the whole thing. And this came out in August of August 19. And uh, they submitted a petition for misusing her position. This socialist organization here is having Kashama Solidarity rallies. Yeah. That's what they're having because they want to stand with her. They don't want those terrible right-wingers to uh, cause any problems. This is Kashama Solidarity Rally. But look at this. Uh, her speech after King County Superior Court's ruling on the right-wing and big business recall attempt. So she's blaming it on them. And this just came out September 16th. So she's blaming it on them, but the ruling was against her. So they will be doing the recall. However, it's going to, you know, be a few months before it actually makes it to that. So it probably won't be until, I think it said April of 2021 is what I was seeing. Oh, so anyway, she, she talks about it and, all her Marxist terms, she uses just about everything that they, they say here. While working people should be angry at this outcome, we should not be surprised. The laws and courts and police under capitalism do not serve working people, people of color, those already marginalized under capitalism. They are made to hold us down. They are made to hold up the status quo of deep inequality, of violence, of racism, sexism, of ruthless exploitation of the whole working class and the environment. It's just like everybody in the world. Oh, to them, capitalism is the root of all evil. So that's what they think. And again, this is almost word for word what I read on that other site um, when I read that one piece. It, this is what they say. They say the same talking points 
all the way through. They just repeat the same things. So, of course, they're talking about this. She's just so, oh, look at what they've done to me. They're afraid. They're afraid. The ruling class and the right wing are afraid of us, of the movement against racism. This isn't against racism. This is for socialism, of the workers' movement, of the socialist movement. They are afraid that regular people are fighting back on a scale and with a passion that these rotten corporate politicians have not seen in a long time. Oh, it's just... Anyway, if you go on down here, then uh, this is what I thought was kind of interesting. It It is important that the city council yesterday voted 7 to 1 in favor of supporting funding for our legal defense against the recall effort. Because she's going to appeal. You know, she's going to appeal it. And so, um, I just, good for the people in Seattle that they signed the petition to recall this nutter. I mean, she's just out there, really. And she's a full-blown socialist. How did they ever put her in office? Infiltration, infiltration. So anyway, yeah, this is just, the more you read it, the more you want to go, eh. So as of now, the judge has ruled that she will be recalled. But again, the vote for that's not going to take place until next year. So she still has a lot of time left in office to do an awful lot of damage. And she will appeal the ruling, I'm sure. So anyway, that's what I've got for you on this one. I want to thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you all later. <music>